Right. Today we are going to talk about basic concepts related with the pneumothorax. Right. So first of all, what is pneumothorax? Every student knows pneumothorax is basically air in the plural cavity or air or other gas in the plural cavity. Is that right? Now, why it is so important to learn pneumothorax? Because once air is present in the plural cavity, it may lead to the collapse of lung. Now I'm going to explain that how the presence of air leads to collapse of lung. It means how pneumothorax can lead to part of a part of a lung collapse or total even collapse in some situations right so let's see that here you have your lung right and these are your airways let's suppose here is your yes what is that pleura you know lungs now this part of the pleura pleura is basically double layer And outside what should be there? Yes. Chest wall. What should be here? Chest wall. And here are your intercostal muscles. Right? Now, I will give you little, little basics before I go into detail. Now, of course it's diaphragm. Now, what I want to put in your mind that lungs are surrounded by a double layer of pleura, right? Now one layer which is intimately attached with the lung parenchyma. This layer of pleura which is attached with the lung parenchyma, pulmonary parenchyma, right? Uh, this is visceral pleura. What is it called? Yes, visceral pleura. And then there is other part of the pleura, the outer layer of the pleura, uh, which is basically attached with the chest wall, right here, which is very strongly attached with the chest wall and diaphragm and even with the mediastinum, right? Now this layer of pleura, this layer of pleura, this is outer layer of pleura and we call it parietal layer of pleura. So basically pleura consists of two layers, visceral pleura which is attached with the lung parenchyma and parietal pleura or outer pleura which is attached with the thoracic cavity, right? Now, in between the two pleural layer, there is potential space, there is potential space potential space mean in real sense there is no space but space can be created these two layers of pleura can be separated so there is potential space with very little uh, lubricating fluid normally in a healthy person the pleural cavity pleural cavity is the cavity between the visceral pleura and parietal pleura it has about 10 ml to 15 ml or around 15 ml fluid on both sides pleural cavity uh, which is lubricating fluid what is the function of that pleural cavity what is the function of these two pleura right i will elaborate here uh, but before i explain let me tell you that lung lung tissue has a tendency to collapse in lung is an elastic tissue Lung parenchyma has a lot of elastic tissue and it has a tendency to collapse in. So it means our lungs have, if, if I look at this part of the lung, it has a tendency to collapse in or it has a tendency for recoiling in due to its re elastic recoil. It's right. In the same way, our chest wall, it has a tendency to to recoil outward it has a tendency to recoil outward right now lungs have a tendency to shrink inward or bounce inward and chest wall has a tendency to bounce outward but 
both these lungs and the chest wall they are held together they are held together due to stickiness of these two pleural layer visceral pleural layer and parietal pleural layer they are sticky to each other they can glide on each other they can glide. normally glide or slide on each other right i mean if we consider that this is here is your lung here is your chest wall now this is my which pleura yes. visceral and what is this pleura parietal now visceral and parietal pleura they are sticky they are having some sticky fluid lubricating fluid they can glide on each other but in healthy situation they cannot separate but because lungs are all the time trying to collapse in or recoil in and lungs are, uh, and chest wall is all the time trying to recoil out so due to this reason as both lungs tendency to recoil in chest wall tendency to recoil out so it procreates negative intrapleural pressure what it creates negative, negative intrapleural pressure. pressure it means pressure in between the two layers of pleura is negative sub atmospheric right in a healthy person most of the time in a healthy person during normal breathing intrapleural pressure is always negative because lungs will love to move in and chest wall will love to move out but stickiness of them is keeping them together is that clear any question up to this now this negative intrapleural pressure this negative intrapleural pressure which is created here what is this negative intra pleural pressure lungs love this pressure lungs love this pressure why because this pressure keep the lungs expanded if you finish this pressure lungs will collapse in and if lungs collapse in can they do their ventilatory and other functions properly no, no? for proper function of the lungs lungs should be appropriately inflated and to keep the lungs inflated right pleural cavity must have negative pressure intrapleural pressure so lungs remain expanded i will explain it with an example also let's suppose there is a glass slide this is which layer visceral and what is this parietal and i put them together as two slides you know in the laboratory you see the glass slides now this is behaving as parietal pleura which is trying to go outward. outward it is attached with the chest wall which has a pull outward and this is behaving as visceral pleura which is trying to pull the this inward. inward now you imagine these two pleural layers from here i put it here they are like glass slides which we use in the pathology lab or histology lab and they are wet and they are wet when two glass slides are wet they are sticky to each other they are sticky, sticky to each other is that right and if you slightly pull on the other sides there will be some negative pressure created here yes. is that right but they can glide on each other they can slide on each other but they cannot fall apart if you don't put too much pressure is that right now if by some mechanism you introduce air here a little here if you put a little air do you think they will stay together they will separate when they will separate it will bounce outward and other part will bounce inward, inward and a cavity true cavity with air is produced in between the two plural layers is that clear so what is happening that once air enters into pleural cavity 
वंस एयर एंटर्स इनटू प्लूरल कैविटी लाइक दीज टू स्टिकी स्लाइड्स टू लेयर द प्लूरा फॉल अवे एंड दैट पार्ट ऑफ द चेस्ट वॉल विल बल्ज आउटवर्ड एंड दैट एडजस्टेंट लंग विद दैट चेस्ट वॉल विल रिक्वायर इनवर्ड सो चेस्ट वॉल एंड लंग्स विल बी सेपरेटेड and once they are separated during inspiration or expiration as you move the chest wall will lung move with that no and lung will lose its ventilatory functions lungs will lose their lose their ventilatory, ventilatory function is that clear yes so up to now i have only explained what is pneumothorax pneumothorax is presence of the air or other gas in the pleural cavity and i explained that once air enters there what will happen two layers of the pleural cavity will fall apart right it means negative inter pleural pressure will be lost negative once you introduce the air negative inter pleural pressure will be lost right or reduced and when two layers are separated chest will bulge outward, outward and lungs will collapse outward. or part of the lung will collapse outward. inward is that clear so this is what happens in pneumothorax but the question is that from where the air comes question is from where the air enters into pleural cavity very simple either air will come either air will come from you know normally air is pre present in the lung parenchyma in the alveolar conducting an alveolar system respiratory system so either air can enter from what is this side from, lungs. from the lungs or air may enter from the chest wall right now we going to detail what are the causes of pneumothorax we just discussed what is pneumothorax and we discuss what happens to lungs and chest wall if air enters into pleural cavity and i said air can either come from the lungs or it can come from the chest wall now we will going to detail that what are the causes of entry of air into pleura right according to that pneumothorax according to the cause of that how air enters in the pleural cavity uh, it is class basically classified into sp spontaneous pneumothorax and traumatic pneumothorax so now i will go into detail that what is spontaneous pneumothorax and what is traumatic pneumothorax first of all you should know the difference between that new what is the real difference between spontaneous pneumothorax and traumatic pneumothorax spontaneous pneumothorax is where a person develops suddenly pneumothorax person develops suddenly pneumothorax without any recent trauma without any antecedent trauma without any warning i'm just standing here and i may develop pneumothorax right if you develop pneumothorax suddenly without any antecedent trauma or any warning such pneumothorax is called spontaneous pneumothorax or very simply spontaneous pneumothorax is the pneumothorax which occurs spontaneously <laughs> what is the spontaneous pneumothorax spontaneous pneumothorax is when pneumothorax occur spontaneously it means without any precipitating cause there without any trauma without any antecedent Cause. event so but traumatic pneumothorax is when air enters into pleural cavity either there is trauma to the chest wall or trauma to the lung tissue so if entrance of air is after the trauma or due to the trauma to the chest wall or to the lung then we say this pneumothorax is traumatic pneumothorax so the real difference between spontaneous pneumothorax is spontaneous pneumothorax occurs without trauma and traumatic neuro uh, pneumothorax occurs due to trauma now spontaneous pneumothorax is further divided into two types spontaneous pneumothorax that is primary spontaneous pneumothorax right and there is 
सेकेंडरी न्यूमो स्पोन्टेनियस स्पोन्टेनियस न्यूमो थॉरेक्स अगेन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वंस द एयर इज प्रेजेंट इन द अपलूरा इट इज न्यूमो थॉरेक्स देन यू हैव टू सी इन द हिस्ट्री वॉज एंट्री ऑफ द एयर ड्यू टू सम ट्रॉमा देन इट इज if it is due to trauma then it is traumatic, traumatic pneumothorax and if it is without trauma then it is spontaneous pneumothorax spontaneous pneumothorax is divided into two types of situation one group of patient in which pneumothorax occurs spontaneously without any significant underlying pulmonary disease for example this is my patient right this patient suddenly develop pneumothorax and there is no underlying lung disease there is no underlying lung disease we say it is primary spontaneous, spontaneous pneumothorax or idiopathic it was previously considered idiopathic spontaneous, spontaneous pneumothorax and then i talk about second patient in this patient what happens even though pneumothorax occurred spontaneously but there is already some serious disease in the lung there is some significant pathology in the lung and that pathology lead to spontaneous pneumothorax it means that pathology led to the pneumothorax formation but there is no trauma underlying lung pathology is there such kind of spontaneous pneumothorax is said to be secondary spontaneous, spontaneous pneumothorax so we can say if if in the case of pneumothorax let me draw a pneumothorax here and here is your lung and air is here let's suppose this is the air now if someone has air in pleural cavity and it suddenly came it is spontaneous and there is no significant underlying lung disease right then we will call it primary spontaneous pneumothorax and if there was some underlying pathology in the lung and that pathology led to the entry of the air here but suddenly without any trauma here right without any injury here just pathological process in the lung led to the leakage of air here then it is also spontaneous but secondary to a pulmonary disease right now what are the patients in which primary spontaneous pneumothorax occur usually these are young males more commonly it can occur in females but less commonly primary spontaneous pneumothorax is most commonly seen in young males around age of you can say teenagers or usually less than 30 right and yes they are thin tall young males and usually smokers smoking enhances the risk of primary spontaneous pneumothorax now question is that why in young thin tall young males spontaneous primary pneumothorax occur someone apparently very young and very healthy right no underlying lung disease right nothing diagnosed or no underlying lung disease but suddenly pneumothorax developed because initially doctors never knew the cause they just called it idiopathic spontaneous pneumothorax but now we know what is the cause actually in some young people pleura this is which layer of pleura visceral layer right and here is parietal layer 
समटाइम्स वट हैपन विसरल देर इज एयर बबल और एयर प्रेजेंट जस्ट अंडर द ओके एयर इज प्रेजेंट हियर दिस इज सब प्लूरल एयर बबल वी कॉल इट ब्लैब वट वी कॉल इट पलमोनरी ब्लैब इट इज पलमोनरी ब्लैब सो वट एक्चुअली मैनी यंग टॉल थिन मेल्स मे हैव मल्टीपल सब प्लूरल ब्लैब्स वट आर दीज ब्लैब्स दीज आर एयर पॉकेट्स विच आर बिटवीन द लंग पेरेंट कायमा एंड द विसरल प्लूरा और समटाइम्स इन बिटवीन द टू लेयर्स ऑफ विसरल प्लूरा इन दैट केस वी कॉल इट इंट्रा प्लूरल ब्लैब so there may be sub plural blab or or if it is like that then it is intra plural blab blab now these are multiple blabs in usually young thin tall males and sometimes they rupture and when this blab will rupture of course air will leak into pleural cavity and air will leak into pleural cavity right so what is the underlying cause of primary spontaneous pneumothorax i will say the presence of subpleural or intrapleural blabs which are under the or in the visceral pleura not parietal under the visceral pleura usually these blabs are multiple usually these blabs are multiple due to this reason these patients who are diagnosed with primary spontaneous pneumothorax these patients have a high tendency of recurrence right because maybe today one blab is ruptured after 6 months another blab rupture after 3 years another blab ruptures you are getting it depending on depending on how many blabs are there right so is that clear yes. now another term which is used these are plural blabs another term is used pulmonary bulla have you heard of it pulmonary bulla what is the difference between blab and bulla bulla i put it here plural blabs or pulmonary bulla both are air filled spaces both are air filled spaces both can lead to pneumothorax but there is significant difference the difference is if this is the lung this is your which layer visceral if air is trapped here okay i show if air bubbles are trapped here what is this sub pleural blab or if there is a little visceral pleura here also it is intra pleural blab now how it is different from pulmonary bulla in the pulmonary bulla actually there is a big air filled cavity right but point to be noted is that this is air containing large air containing space most commonly seen in patient with emphysema here actually this air bubble is surrounded on all sides from the lung parenchyma right here on one side there is lung parenchyma and on other side there is visceral pleura you understand the difference so pulmonary bullas are large air spaces which may be present sub pleurally but they are all from or air is throughout surrounded by parenchyma lung parenchyma in blab it may be sub pleural or intra pleural right and if it is sub pleural then on one side it is by uh, surrounded by the visceral pleura another side it is surrounded by the lung parenchyma lung parenchyma 
am i clear now we come to secondary spontaneous Now we come to secondary spontaneous pneumothorax. What is secondary spontaneous pneumothorax? We'll go back to our discussion. Let's suppose here is your beautiful lung, and here are your air space. So simplified diagram and here is your visceral pleura and here is on mediastinal pleura on this side diaphragmatic pleura and other part of the pleura which is parietal, parietal pleura this is there outer pleura now sometimes air escape into pleural cavity from the lungs due to some underlying pathology in the lung here there was no significant pathology just there were blebs but in this case where air suddenly come into pleural cavity because it comes suddenly without any antecedent trauma we say it is spontaneous but this spontaneous event spontaneous entry of air is associated with underlying significant pulmonary pathology so we call it secondary spontaneous pneumothorax now question is that how the air can reach from the lung to the pleura one thing is very simple that air may leak into maybe there is some pathology and due to that pathology air space is just under the pleura and subpleural rupture of air space and air enters from here i will talk about the causes later right this is one way it is a direct entry of air from the subpleural pathology into pleural cavity other is that sometimes air leak into interstitium of the lung this is lung parenchyma or interstitium from here air moves proximally to the media steinum so it means air leaked into lung parenchyma then moved to it dissected through the lung interstitium and then it went into mediastinum right and through the mediastinum it may produce a rupture in what is this parietal pleura and may enter here or it may to go towards the neck and this air may escape into subcutaneous tissue we call it subcutaneous emphysema have you heard of it yes. which produces crepitus so what happens what i'm trying to tell you that if there is significant pathology in the lung due to this pathology air from the pulmonary air spaces may enter directly into pleura right or it may take a interstitial route and through the interstitium either it goes to mediastinum producing mediastinum mediastinal emphysema and then it may produce a rupture in the pleura and may produce pneumothorax or even it may go uh, upward into neck and uh, the root of the neck and subcutaneous tissue and produce subcutaneous emphysema you are understanding yes, yes, now what could be the underlying pathologies which can lead to this kind of pneumothorax right what could be the underlying causes once once i finish these causes uh, ask me what are the classical features of spontaneous pneumothorax right now what could be the causes one thing very simple if due to any reason i will enlarge this here right now i'm going to explain the mechanism of 
this is the air phase and here are let's suppose other distal air spaces it's a simplified diagram now what could be the different diseases of lungs which can lead to spontaneous, spontaneous secondary pneumothorax answer is almost every lung disease but still I will stress on the more common first of all first group of diseases is obstructive lung diseases what are they obstructive obstructive lung diseases now obstructive lung diseases are those lung diseases in which there is increased resistance to the air flow through the air passages obstructive lung diseases that when air is moving through the air passages there is increased resistance there is some degree of pathological obstruction faced by the air to flow through airways during inspiration and expiration is that right then we call now if this kind of obstruction is there in the airways we call it obstructive lung disease right usually generally speaking uh, obstruction is more pronounced during expiration and less pronounced during inspiration, inspiration. in obstructive lung diseases during inspiration degree of obstruction is less and during expiration degree of obstruction is more what i am trying to say that generally speaking in obstructive lung diseases for air to enter in is relatively easy but to get out is relatively more difficult so i mean this is something that you can get in but you cannot get out there are many situations in life like that you get into a relationship sometimes but you cannot get out or there's more resistance you happily entered in inspiration but to get out of the relationship sometimes there is unusual obstruction now question is before i go into really detail and all these causes i must explain why in obstructive lung diseases there is more resistance to the air flow during expiration and why there is less resistance during inspiration. inspiration to explain that i will go to normal lung how the normal lung lungs behave right during inspiration and expiration right let's suppose this is your normal lung healthy lung alhamdulillah and these are the airways right I will make these black. These are distal air spaces, right? These are all air spaces, and they are all around. Is that right? Yes. This is lung parenchyma. Now, as I told you previously. that lungs have lot of elastic tissue so they love to recoil lungs normally love to recoil but normally in a healthy person lungs are kept inflated due to negative intrapleural pressure is that right now imagine this is your pleural which layer and this is parietal when chest wall is expanding when chest wall is expanding during inspiration chest wall is pulling the visceral layer outward that is pulling the lung outward in the same way diaphragm so what happens that lung is during inspiration lungs are being pulled from everywhere outward for expansion lungs are being pulled outward 
when they are being pulled outward, this airway, suppose this airway, lung is being pulled there and pulled here. What will happen to this airway? Open. Open. So during inspiration, what happens? When whole lung is expanding, when whole lung is expanding, there is a peripheral traction of the elastic lung tissue on the airways as well. And airways are also expanded, right? Let me make a section from here, this airway, right? If I make a section here, this airway I put, this is the airway, this point, right? And this point. This is the airway and here are, what are these? Your lungs, different spaces. Is that right? Now during inspiration, now listen carefully, during inspiration, when lung is expanding, you are understanding? When it is expanding, there is traction on what? Airway. Right? Or we can make a part of a lung like that. I, I make a section of lung here. This is airway. Right? And then it is dividing into, let's suppose, air spaces, right? Now actually, all this is surrounding by lung, parenchyma, you understand it? When lungs are expanding, when lungs are expanding, it means the whole lung parenchyma is Expanding lung hor parenchyma. So this all the lung parenchyma which is surrounding what? This airway, that is also pulling the airway outward, all walls. So airway will become open. This is what happens normally during inspiration. There is a, that during inspiration to already open airways, there is as lungs are expanding, elastic pull of the lung tissue has added traction, radial traction on the airways. So during inspiration, they become more wide open and inspiration is relatively easy. Now, in a healthy person first, during expiration what happens? In a healthy person, when expiration is occurring, lung is getting smaller. When lungs are getting smaller, the traction on the airways by the pulmonary substance is increased or decreased? Decreased. decreased. When traction is decreased, they become relatively Small. smaller. So in a normal healthy person, during inspiration, airways are relatively right. wide, more open. And in a normal healthy person, during expiration, airways are relatively narrow. But this little narrowness does not produce any pathology in a healthy person. Is that right? Now you imagine, if there is some obstructive disease, let's suppose there is some obstructive disease and due, due to that reason, there is some obstruction here. So, airway is permanently smaller. Now during inspiration, airway will still open due to traction around it. But during expiration, it, it may become very, very narrow. narrow. Your understanding? Yes. Again, I will repeat. If there is obstructive airway disease, let's suppose there is some obstruction to this point. Right? Now, okay, leave a little opening at least. Now, there's a little opening here. When this person will do inspiration, as lung tissue will expand, it will radially open the airways. So during inspiration, it opens a little more and there is less resistance to the airflow. There is resistance, but less. But when this person do expiration, when lungs are getting smaller, airways are no more pulled radially outward, so they also become further small. And because there was pre-existing obstruction, at the top during expiration, the airways become smaller. So for outward flow become too much restricted. Are you understanding? Yes. yes. Or I'm just teaching myself. Yes, you got it? Yes, so I will repeat what I said up to now. First of all, I said airways are not static. They are dynamic. During inspiration, 
they open and during expiration they become little narrow in a healthy person during inspiration and expiration in both situations in a healthy person airways are open but they are more open during inspiration and less open during expiration why normally they more open during inspiration due to radial traction of elastic tissue when lungs are expanding all the airways open and during expiration when traction on the airways from the periphery is less so elastic recoil of airway wall little bit narrow the airways is it right then i came to this thing if in the airway there is already obstruction if there is some obstructive disease right if there is some obstructive disease that during inspiration airway may open a little bit and inspiration may lead to some inflow of the air but during expiration airway become pathologically too much narrow, narrow and air there's more difficulty in getting the air out again in obstructive lung diseases obstruction during inspiration is less pronounced and during expiration it is more pronounced so usually in obstructive lung diseases the main problem is not how to get the air in the more serious problem is usually usually with exceptions usually how to get get the air out it means during inspiration you take the air in and during expiration less air come out during inspiration you take more air in during expiration you take less air out progressively you accumulate the air and lungs become bigger and chest become barrel shaped in obstructive lung diseases any question up to this no here i want to tell another thing okay come over here what are obstructive lung diseases uh who will tell me okay doctor just name the obstructive lung diseases you are about to impress me yes please emphysema very good emphysema this produces obstruction i will explain how then there is chronic very good bronchitis then asthma then bronchiectasis diseases now these are common obstructive lung diseases right there are some other also i will not go into detail of those now obstructive lung diseases the lung diseases in which there is obstruction to the air flow especially more pronounced during expiration is seen in patient with emphysema patient with chronic bronchitis patient with asthma and patient with bronchiectasis right and there is a term very commonly used chronic copd have you heard of this there is a term called copd chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases very good what is the difference in obstructive lung diseases and copd uh, question goes to any young man raise your hand who can tell me the difference between obstructive lung diseases and chronic oh, and copd it means i'm asking about what is the difference between obstructive lung diseases and chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases yeah. yes he is saying it's the same and all of you must know he is wrong he is wrong all obstructive lung diseases are not the part of copd this is very important to understand many doctors get confused about it there are so many diseases which produce obstruction to the air flow in the lung uh, but all of them are not copd all of them are not chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases when we talk about chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases basically we are talking about these two classically speaking typically speaking these two are c o p d so if i so i can say i can classify it like this also obstructive lung diseases are copd asthma and bronchiectasis another better way for understanding obstructive lung diseases are copd plus asthma bronchiectasis and copd mainly include emphysema and chronic bronchitis is that right and all these diseases because they produce some degree of obstruction right because they are producing some degree of obstruction what happens during inspiration let's suppose okay 
we talk about this situation. There is obstruction here, right? Obstruction. Now, in these cases, air will during inspiration will get into airways and air spaces, yeah. right? Air will enter, but during expression, all of it is not going out. So pressure in the alveoli will go up or down. It will be up. Will be up. Yes, it's very simple. That when there are obstructive lung diseases, regardless of its emphysema or chronic bronchitis or asthma or bronchiectasis, whatever kind of obstructive lung diseases, right? Because there's more obstruction during expiration, so air is trapped here. Air is trapped here, but walls of alveolar now pressure in the alveolar space is increasing, right? In obstructive lung diseases, when air traps and pressure in this air pockets increases when pressure in these air pockets increases alveoli are very delicate walls they may rupture they may rupture. rupture and if they rupture just under the pleura then there will be direct entry of air. air into pleura now you understand how a patient with obstructive lung disease has predisposition for pneumothorax why? Because these patients have number one, higher pressure in the alveoli, and some of the alveoli really become high pressured in obstructive lung diseases, and their delicate walls of the alveoli may rupture. And if it is just subpleurally, air will escape into pleura and produce pneumothorax. Or alveoli rupture, where? In the interstitium, delicate walls. When alveolar rupture, pressure which was air which was under pressure will enter into interstitium, and this interstitial air will track, as I mentioned previously, and ev eventually enter into pleural cavity. So either there is subpleural leakage of air from the alveolar spaces, or there is interstitial leakage of air. alveolar air, right, and then interstitial. Uh, area is dissected by the air and this dissection may move proximally towards the mediastinum as I mentioned previously and eventually it may rupture the pleura and produce pneumothorax. So is it clear that yes. how obstructive lung diseases can predispose a person to pneumothorax? This pneumothorax may occur without trauma. There is no, no one is putting the knife in your chest. There is already pathology in the lung and that pathology precipitated this secondary, secondary spontaneous pneumothorax. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Anyone who is confused? Very good. Here I want to mention one thing. When we talk about that airway obstruction, especially airway obstruction, it's very clear. In chronic bronchitis, underlying pathology is that airway has hyperplasia of mucous glands in chronic obstruction and there are more secretions again I will repeat let's suppose here you have mm, airway cross section right these are the mucus what are these mucous glands right these are the blood vessels right and here are out uh, what is this smooth muscles what are these smooth muscles now this is the lumen what is this this is the lumen now imagine I will talk about emphysema later in chronic bronchitis what is the underlying problem even though it is diagnosed clinically that there is persistent persistent cough more than three months with sputum production may or may not be but with sputum production more than three months in two consecutive years without any other explanation of the clinical features right but I will not go into detail we will have a full lecture on chron uh, chronic bronchitis thorough detail for a while I will just mention in chronic bronchitis what really happens that these secretory glands become hyperplastic and there are more secretions and if they are producing more secretions it means there is intraluminal obstruction in chronic bronchitis due to increased secretion plus in chronic bronchitis there is inflammation of bronchial wall and this swells inward 
when it swells inward further reduces the lumen so in chronic bronchitis obstruction is due to luminal increased secretions and also due to inflammation of uh, airway walls bronchioles walls clear in asthma what happen there are three components one increased secretions number two inflammation of the wall and swelling and edema plus constriction of bronco constriction episodic reversible bronco constriction all these things can lead to obstruction so this can lead to obstructive situation this can lead to obstructive situation later on we'll discuss in detail in bronchiectasis what happened there necrotizing inflammations necrotizing inflammation of the wall of what is this bronchi which lead to destruction of cartilages and smooth muscles and other components of the bronchial wall and at places bronchial walls pathologically and irreversibly dilate but because they have increased secretions also let's let me make airway with bronchiectasis this is airway it has one pocket here and one pocket here and one pocket here like that now what happens in this area they were necrotizing inflammation we destroyed the elastic tissue and sportic sportive component of the bronchial wall so much that it become very weak and due to air pressure it bulge out so these are you can say permanently irreversibly dilated areas of airway this is bronchiectasis but you need to remember that inflammation is not only in these pockets inflammation is in between that too you are understanding so whole lining of bronchial tree is inflamed in bronchiectasis multiple areas are inflamed and if this area is inflamed and there is infection and secretions it will become obstructed so what i'm saying that chronic bronchitis it leads to what obstruction due to increased secretions and inflammation and edema of airway walls asthma obstruction due to increased secretions swelling and edema inflammation and bronco constriction smooth muscle restriction and bronchiectasis also has obstruction due to uh, increased secretion and inflammations is that right the real master understanding is needed to understand why in emphysema airways become obstructed because emphysema is a disease related with distal air spaces emphysema is a disease related with distal air spaces so what really happens in emphysema that air spaces become enlarged alveolar air spaces become enlarged and their septa are destroyed this is the basic pathology right again let me explain this is let's suppose i'm just showing part of a lung uh which is having mfi sima <coughs> now what is happening these are the normal now you see what is happening actually in emphysema these septa these septa these are destroyed right due to inflammation we will we'll have a full lecture on emphysema for a while you just trust me that what really happens in emphysema these septa you know these septa these are destroyed by different uh, proteolytic enzymes and collagenases and elastases which are released by neutrophils and other mechanisms when they are destroyed what will happen that it will become like that i mean air space will become like this and like this and this component is lost here also if air space was like that this component is destroyed intralveolar septa are destroyed and if they are destroyed then it will also become like this here also they are destroyed become like that so what really happens in emphysema 
that inter alveolar septa are destroyed and when they are digested away and destroyed distal air spaces will become smaller or larger of course larger right but these septa have elastic tissue it means if there is widespread emphysema of the whole lung if both lungs undergo widespread emphysema it means millions and millions of interalveolar septa are destroyed millions and millions of interalveolar septa are destroyed if they are destroyed it means actually lung elastic tissue is destroyed what does it mean lungs elastic tissue is destroyed and when lungs elastic tissue become destroyed lungs become tight or they become loose okay just imagine you have a rubber band and in a rubber band rubber if elastic tissue is destroyed then it will recoil strongly or it will recoil weakly it will recoil weakly are you understanding what i'm saying that again in the lungs elastic tissue is destroyed because interalveolar septa are destroyed so lungs tendency to collapse is less or more less, less. less. what really happens air spaces become large okay i will showing here also emphysematous changes so this also become like this this and this septa are lost now you imagine that if this is a airway around it there are all air spaces if all air spaces have lost their septa then their ability to keep the their ability to keep the airway open radial pull is increased or decreased decreased this is what happens in emphysema that in patients with emphysema even though patient with pure emphysema there may not be pathology significant pathology in the airway itself pathology is in the alveolar area but due to loss of interest interalveolar septa or we can say due to loss of elastic tissue in the lungs the radial traction on the airway is reduced so patient with emphysema lungs have big lungs but narrow airways are you understanding yes. they have big lungs over inflated lungs hyper inflated lungs dilated air spaces but because airways cannot be having a traction outward so what really happens that this elastic tissue which was previously very tight now it become loose because there is less elastic tissue so it cannot keep it open so during inspiration air may go somewhat but can during expiration it can come out easily no, no. so this is a mechanism of obstruction in patient with emphysema so if someone asked you in emphysema in patient with pure emphysema because many patient have a combination of features of emphysema and chronic bronchitis because both of them are associated with the smoking strongly associated with smoking but if you end up with a patient with emphysema pure emphysema then what will happen that distal airways distal air spaces or interalveolar septa are destroyed it means collagenases and elastases have been very active and when elastic tissue of the lung is destroyed lungs have less tendency to recoil and even <coughs> during and even the normal radial traction on the airways by the surrounding lung tissue that is also reduced so airways become narrow, narrow. so during inspiration there is there is resistance to the flow but less but during expiration there is pronounced obstruction right you are understanding and per you are understanding it or not yes, clear okay any question up to this right so these are obstructive lung diseases like emphysema chronic bronchitis asthma bronchiectasis and other obstructive lung diseases <coughs> they can lead to emphysema uh, sorry can lead to pneumothorax either by release of air directly from subpleural rupture of the alveoli or rupture of alveoli due to high pressure in interstitium and then air moves through the interstitium into the mediastinum and then it may rupture any question up to this
so now you are you are very clear hopefully that patient who have obstructive lung diseases right they have a higher risk of pneumothorax spontaneous pneumothorax and this spontaneous pneumothorax must be considered secondary pneumothorax then another group of diseases of lung that is destructive and destructive and cavitatory lesions of the lung pathologies already we have discussed lung diseases obstructive lung diseases in which two of them are copd but there can be other lung other underlying pathologies they can also produce spontaneous secondary emphysema yes uh, pneumothorax spontaneous secondary pneumothorax what could be the other causes other causes may be yes i told what could be those causes that is destructive and destructive and cavitatory lesion cavitatory pathologies in the lung now how destructive okay let me put it here obstructive lung diseases and destructive and cavitatory lung diseases they can also produce secondary spontaneous pneumothorax they can also produce secondary spontaneous pneumothorax thanks god it is easier to understand than this one let me make a diagram this is the suppose airway right <coughs> these are your distal air spaces right in the same way here we can put also air spaces now if there is destructive lesion for example there is lung abscess and what is here this is your which pleura Western. and there parietal now imagine if there is some destructive lung disease for example there is a lung abscess here there is lung abscess here now it destroys this tissue right on one side it has airway on other side it is just under the pleura so easy to understand if this abscess ruptures and drain into what pleura then air can move from what is this bronchus from the airway passing through the pathological tissues opening and directly opening into pleural cavity because this pathological process which is destroying the lung parenchyma on one side it was having airway on other side it was just subpleurally situated it was situated just under the pleura if this destructive or cavitatory lesion breaks away then air from the bronchial tree can directly enter into pleura and produce pneumothorax is it clear another thing can happen that let's suppose that this cavitatory lesion is here or destructive lesion is here right and it undergo necrosis on one side it is connected with the airway other side it is lung interstitium so it is possible when it melt away the air from the bronchial tree may enter into interstitium of the lung and then the same route from the interstitium it may go dissect and eventually reach to pleura and produce pneumothorax so this is the mechanism in which destructive and cavitatory diseases of lungs increases the risk of secondary spontaneous pneumothorax clear now what are the examples of this condition of course at the top i would love to put tuberculosis because tuberculosis
not only produces caseous necrosis but it also produces cavitatory lesions so in patient with tuberculosis there is a risk of pneumothorax is that right then suppurative pneumonias pneumonias are the infections of lung parenchyma and if there is very aggressive pathogen right for example staphylococcus aureus or klebsiella pneumoniae right or uh, right so very aggressive organism or even in a patient with hiv pneumocystis pneumonia is that right pneumocystis pneumonia is more commonly seen in patient with are immuno compromised right that is opportunistic organism pneumocystis now any pneumonia which is very aggressive it may be bacterial or it may be fungal or any kind of pneumonia if it produces destructive lesions and eventually cavitatory lesions it increases the risk of secondary spontaneous pneumothorax specially mentioned pcp pneumocystis pneumonia right S classically seen in patient with severe immunocompromised situation like hiv and aids then yes what else you can tell me about cystic. cystic fibrosis i have a full lecture already recorded on that then you can come yes pulmonary infarctions if this pulmonary infarction and infarcted area necrotizes you are understanding on one end there is air way and other end there is pleural area air may leak in leak into pleural area so again severe pulmonary infarcted area is a destructive area destroyed area so what happens either tuberculous destruction or other severe infections classically lung abscess of course i should mention here lung abscess it can drain into pleura and then also connect the bronchus with the pleura if pleura and bronchus if bronchus and pleura they are connected and air can coming from bronchial tree to the pleura we also call this condition bronco this is bronchus bronco pleural fistula what is it called bronco pleural fistula right so many cavitatory or destructive lesions may produce bronco pleural fistulas so we are talking about lung abscess tuberculosis pneumonia uh, pneumocystis carney pneumonia no pneumocystis pneumonia its name is changed now uh, cystic fibrosis pulmonary infarction then yes carcinoma pulmonary carcinoma uh, which carcinoma is a, which lung cancer has a high chance of cavitatory lesion squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma usually these are central lesions they achieve a bigger mass and they, the then in the center they undergo necrosis and cavitation right squamous cell carcinoma and even though it is centrally located lesion squamous cell carcinoma but this cavitatory lesion may connect the pleura and airways and may lead to what secondary pneumo thorax so what we have talked about tb and suppurative pneumonia pneumocystis pneumonia lung abscess cystic fibrosis carcinoma infarctions right all these are can lead to spontaneous secondary spontaneous pneumothorax is that right now uh, we have just discussed what is pneumothorax up to now what is pneumothorax just presence of air in the pleural cavity or other gas in the pleural cavity what happens due to presence of pneumothorax two layers of the pleura separate from each other chest bounces out and lungs bounces in and collapse and ventilatory functions of lungs are impaired is that right why pneumothorax occur it may be spontaneous or it may be due to some trauma we have not discussed traumatic pneumothorax up to now even we have not discussed the type of pneumothorax i was just concentrating that spontaneous pneumothorax and its detail it may be primary or it may be secondary spontaneous pneumothorax is pneumothorax which occur suddenly without any antecedent trauma right or any warning in primary spontaneous pneumothorax seen in thin tall young males more often smokers right due to subpleural blebs which are rupture because usually these patients have multiple blebs so there is a high rate of recurrence 
right and you must know the difference between pulmonary blab and pulmonary bulla right blab is partly surrounded by pleura and partly surrounded maybe partly surrounded by the lung parenchyma but bulla is large air space surrounded on all sides by the lung parenchyma then we talked about secondary spontaneous pneumothorax a type of neurothoma uh, pneumothorax in which which is secondary to an underlying lung disease these underlying lung diseases generally can be classified as obstructive lung diseases and destructive and cavitatory diseases remember we will have a lecture separately about obstructive lung diseases and restrictive lung diseases for a while i'm just putting these two words destructive lung diseases obstructive lung diseases like emphysema and chronic bronchitis which are also called copd asthma and bronchiectasis all of these conditions when there is obstructive element uh, air is uh, during expiration there is more severe obstruction and intraalveolar pressure may go up which may rupture and lead to lead to pneumothorax then we were talking about destructive and cavitatory lesions right and these lesions in the lungs maybe on one side they are connected with the airway other side they 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 may leak into pleura or uh, communicate with the interstitium of the lung right and then produce pneumothorax most important is you must remember tuberculosis right here in obstructive lung diseases most common you should remember emphysema so tuberculosis then necrotizing pneumonias uh, what is this pneumocystis pneumonia lung abscesses or cystic fibrosis or pulmonary infarctions or carcinomas all of them increases the risk of what yes and now we go to the okay let's have a break right after that we'll continue and we'll talk about traumatic pneumothorax then we'll go to the types of neuromothorax and then we'll go to the complications of pneumothorax most life threatening complication of pneumothorax is tension pneumothorax which we shall discuss in detail later let's have a